So the Crimson Tide are in for another loaded weekend of top high school prospects coming and visiting Tuscaloosa, and we need to break it down, especially because this weekend in particular holds not only the number one quarterback in the nation, but the number one player in the nation in Arch Manning, and we have got to break it all down. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, why for yes and for no. Are you as an Alabama fan excited that you get Arch Manning back on campus this weekend? and let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, like and comment down below as those interactions, though small, are massively impactful to content creators such as myself in both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's hop right into this and we're going to start at the top with who we talked about in the intro, none other than Arch Manning. Because it's not every day that the number one quarterback in the nation, the number one player in the nation, also fields the last name Manning, which is sure to raise eyebrows and cause the eyes of the college football world to be firmly placed on Arch, seeing where he ultimately ends up playing his college football. And this has been a recruiting process that has gotten a lot of attention, and deservedly so. It's not surprising to anybody. Arch is coming off of visits to Georgia and then ultimately the Texas Longhorns last weekend before he finds his way to Tuscaloosa this weekend. And this is a battle that I'm very excited about. Arch Manning is a phenomenally talented passer, one that every institution involved would love nothing more than to add him into their recruiting class, which is why the likes of Ole Miss, Georgia, Alabama, and Texas are pushing as hard as they are. And one of the things you like about getting Arch Manning back to Tuscaloosa, especially this weekend, is it allows the opportunity for Nick Saban and staff to get back in his ear, especially after the recent visits to Georgia. Georgia and ultimately the Texas Longhorns. Because when we talk about the institutions pushing for Arch, Old Miss, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, all going to be pushing incredibly hard because what he means to this recruiting class. A lot of other high-value targets are interested in playing with Arch Manning, as we can see. And as I say constantly, these top quarterbacks are guys that whenever they commit to an institution, you wait for the ripple effects to happen. Other top offensive playmakers want to play with them, and because of that, we have got to keep an eye on Arch Manning and see where this process ultimately takes us. But he's not the only five-star that's set to be in attendance this weekend. And in fact, if we're staying on the five-star trend, we can talk about Caleb Downs, the number one player in the state of Georgia, also the number one safety in the nation, coming in as the number 13 player in all of high school football. Caleb Downs is a prospect that I'm really intrigued about. And Really simply put, it's because he's a defensive back, and any time the Crimson Tide are recruiting a defensive back, I, as an Alabama fan, get a little bit excited. And to be very honest, it's because of the collection of coaches Alabama has in that area. You have Charles Kelly, who's a phenomenal coach, phenomenal recruiter. It's no secret how high I am on the hire of Travaris Robinson, someone who I think does a great job in terms of both development and recruiting, and we can point to multiple different stops, multiple different names in order to prove that. And then finally, the cherry on top when you're recruiting these defensive backs, not only do you get to put Charles Kelly on the case, not only do you get to put Travaris Robinson on the case, but you also have the GOAT, Nick Saban himself, who's incredibly hands-on with that defensive back position group. And so, whenever Whenever you have a five-star defensive back and they're sitting there looking at the situation, there's a lot of positives when it comes to playing for the University of Alabama, one of those being the rate of development, which is just simply unparalleled right now in college football. What Alabama is doing, the tear they've been on, has been nothing short of incredible but also because of the coaches that are going to be able to work with you. And that right there has got to be an enticing offer, or at least if I put myself in the shoes of a five-star defensive back, there's not a better collection of coaches to work with in the nation. So that's something we have got to keep an eye on. Also, being able to lift him out of a rival state that's in the SEC is sweet as always. So Caleb Downs is a name I'd be very interested to see. I'm already very interested to see what the defensive back recruiting class is going to look like for Alabama, considering they already have a five-star. They're after Tony Mitchell. They're after Cormani McLean. And now you're talking about Caleb Downs. So very interested in that regard. And then there's Jaden Wayne, someone who I actually got the opportunity to see a few weekends ago at the Pylon 7-on-7 event here in Dallas, Texas. And he stood out. I didn't have to ask anybody, hey, is that Jaden Wayne? He stood out. 
And he is a very talented prospect. And one of the most intriguing things about Jaden Wayne is he's a ferocious defensive lineman coming in at number 30 in the nation and the number four defensive lineman in this class, a class loaded with defensive line talent. However, the junior going to be senior out the state of Washington is also an incredibly talented tight end. And he put that on full display at the Pylon 7 on 7 event. He's got a lot of athletic potential. He's someone who I think should be a high priority priority for every institution in the nation, but nonetheless, he's someone I would really, really like the Crimson Tide to be able to get into this class because of his athletic ability, his burst. I just think the sky is truly the limit for him. I think he has got a ton of athletic ability to make a positive, tangible difference early, and he's been to Tuscaloosa multiple times. So this is something I'm going to be watching very closely as an Alabama fan. And just my personal opinion, I'm really hoping that the Crimson Tide get a commitment out of Jaden Wayne here soon. Very talented prospect, one that I'm going to be watching through his senior year because I think he could be set to rise amongst the five stars this year. But this is not all of the list. There's a ton of talented four stars also going to be in attendance or having already attended, such as four-star defensive lineman Hunter Osborne, really highlighting what I've been talking about the past few weeks being that the defensive line class for the Crimson Tide in this cycle is one of massive importance, and we can see that by all the names Alabama is going after and the guys they hope to get in. Luckily for the Crimson Tide, the in-state talent is enough to be enticing. I'm talking about James Smith, Peter Woods, Kelby Collins, Hunter Osborne. There's a lot of names Alabama needs to be excited about in the state on the defensive line, but that doesn't preclude them from going out and getting a guy such as Jaden Wayne, someone who, if he wants to join Alabama's class, he needs to be able to do so with open arms. Very talented prospect. I can't wait to see. But very interested in hearing from y'all. Which prospects are you really interested in this weekend? Is there set to be a ton of talented guys making their way to Tuscaloosa? Which, let's be honest, once the floodgates of recruiting open up, that seems to be the norm with Nick Saban, and it doesn't look to go anywhere anytime soon. But with all that being said, hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See ya.